registered professional forester and I'm the property manager for Peninsula Open Space Trust and Semper Virens Fund on the San Vicente Redwoods property. Redwood is one of my very favorite trees, partly because they are so resilient and so complex genetically. They are hexaploid, which means they have six sets of chromosomes and in that way are quite adaptable. They're one of the longest lived species in the world and they can be the tallest uh, species in the world. They're awe-inspiring, partly because they get to be so huge. They persist through fire, so one of the really neat things is they can burn repeatedly and the first fire will cause a bit of a scar and start a little bit of decay, but the redwood bark will start to grow around that and encapsulate that to start putting on solid wood again for their, their structure. The property is a hub for many mountain lions. The Santa Cruz Puma Project help track the mountain lion population in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It's remote enough in parts of the property that we've had three kittens born, kind of watched them grow up on some of our wildlife cameras. There's also communication centers. Those are the scrapes that mountain lions make with their back paws and then to leave a sign to tell each other whose territory that is. There's 18 mountain lions that use this property very regularly because it is such valuable habitat. One of the cool things about the redwood forest is its ability to harvest fog and create fog drip which sustains the redwoods and also helps store groundwater through the year. The particular composition of the geology in this watershed being mostly decomposed granite with a lot of interstitial spaces between the rocks makes this mountain like a big sponge for storing groundwater. When I walk downstream on this stream I can feel air rushing out of the stream bank that smells musky like an underground cavern and it's cool like it is, it comes from underground. And it meters out that groundwater in many seeps and springs and into the creek year round with pretty consistent, plentiful, cool flow, which helps sustain the population of fish downstream. And a small part of the water is taken out of the creek. It's the sole water supply for the town of Davenport. You can see remnants in places of the quarry floor of the glory holes. It was used to efficiently deliver limestone from the quarry floor to the railroad cars. Yeah, this was really high quality cement, Portland cement. The material was transported as far as the Panama Canal and used to build a bunch of Noteworthy structures in San Francisco, the Bay Bridge, Candlestick Park, the Transamerica Building. Upstream of the quarry in the main San Vicente watershed, one of the main goals has been to reduce erosion potential. In that way, keep the water clear since silted in gravels are not good for fish spawning and not good for drinking water either. In the Santa Cruz Mountains, we have some of the most intense rain events of anywhere on the West Coast. And we can get 10 inches of rain, a really deluge. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, we call it a 100-year storm event. So when we do road improvements, we try to design them to withstand the 100-year storm event. One culvert that we replaced in order to improve fish passage had an eight foot drop. So it was a barrier to migration. We put in seven check dams for very robust fish to be able to pass during high flow. And we widened it out to eight feet so that it can have more of a meander. 
And there's fish! Hooray! The north coast of Santa Cruz County has a lot of endemic species that grow here and nowhere else in the world. Most recently I spent some time with a bryologist delving into the fascinating world of mosses on the property, which is a whole new horizon. So there's just new discoveries all the time. Somebody has to look closely. Yeah, scrutinize. And, and, and learn it, and, and that's, that's the ticket. That's what's so exciting about getting to a new place like this. We haven't gotten to look over this, you know, thousand acres yet. Yeah, So uh, 8,000. 8,000 acres, okay. <laughs> And so that, that's one of the nice things about here. Where there's a lot of calcium, there are species that you just don't find anywhere else. The man who described the new species I discovered at Fall Creek, he was from the Smithsonian. He was an expert in a certain uh, family of mosses. And he decided it was not only a new species, but a new genus. And he named the genus oh. Dacryophyllum, which is a crying leaf. And the oh. cells on the the leaf, as they join the stem, have these protrusions that look like drips of water. And so I think that's a wonderful name, the crying leaf. These are remnants from an old trestle from the San Vicente Lumber Company Railroad which operated on this property between about 1907 and 1923. And that's the period of time when most of the property was clear cut. And the redwood was transported to a mill on the west side of Santa Cruz. And a lot of it went to San Francisco to rebuild the city after the 1906 earthquake. I see a lot of potential in this property to be a new paradigm for land management and protection. Redwood, I think, lends itself very well to selection harvesting because it coppice sprouts. So when you cut down a tree, regeneration from that existing root mass follows immediately. And you end up with what people sometimes call fairy rings or circles of regenerated redwood trees around where the parent tree stood. I think it's exciting that this property will continue to be managed responsibly and sustainably at cutting edge in order to help pay for all the other great things that are planned, the public access and the restoration. We can really do responsible land management here and showcase it.